What's going on, everyone? So yesterday, the Lakers suffered a just brutal loss, right? Jamal Murray, once again, prime Michael Jordan in the clutch. LeBron James misses the three. I know it was a wide-open three, but I would have personally preferred him just putting his head down and getting to the basket. Look, it's not LeBron James' fault that we lost that game. I'm just saying, like, in that moment, in that spot, against a team that you just have failed to get over the hump, right? You're kind of in this back-and-forth spot. It's just like, get the easiest bucket, put it on the refs. Hopefully, maybe you draw the foul, get an and one. But nonetheless, Jamal Murray hits the shot. When we need something to go our way, doesn't happen. When Denver needs it to go their way, always happens. It's just kind of been the story against the Lakers. But in my opinion, the, the big turning point of this game, and again, you don't lose the game on one play, one possession, one whatever. But one thing that I thought really hurt the Lakers, arguably more than anything down the stretch, was this sequence here. When Jamal Murray was going to the basket and it was called a foul, he goes to the foul line and knocks down both free throws. Now, here's the thing. The refs had been absolutely atrocious all game. Uh, they were single-handedly keeping Denver <laughs> in this game on numerous occasions. Uh, just all the overturn calls, stuff like all the marginal talk. But to me, that's why you make that call there. Because two things happen. Either A, it gets overturned. And now you still have the lead. You still maintain the lead. And, you know, you maybe extend the lead and win the game. Or two, it's still ruled a foul. But you get the 10 minutes plus or however long, you know, these refs take 40 minutes sometimes. Right? You get, let's say, 10 minutes of just quality rest to, to get LeBron and AD and everybody just kind of a breather. Allow yourself to draw up a proper play for the next possession or two possessions. You, you have the two timeouts. You can't take them with you. But what ends up happening? Of course, Pockets stands there with his hands in his pockets, doesn't challenge the call. And it's just, once again, Darvin Ham just getting out coached and not understanding. What's the worst that happens? They tie the game either way. So why not take a chance, especially with how the refs had been refing the game up until that point where everything was, you know, basically marginal and every time the Lakers had any type of contact, it was ruled marginal. Why wouldn't you put it on the refs and see if the refs overturn that call and deem it marginal as what happened to you the two previous times? Right, those two previous overturn calls, especially the second one, was just awful. The one on D'Lo was, I mean, atrocious. But why wouldn't you take the chance to see, like, okay, maybe, maybe the refs turn it around, and if they don't, he goes to the foul foul line either way, knocks down two free throws. But at least you gave your guys an opportunity. At least you gave your guys a few minutes to kind of get their wind under them and, and catch a breath and go, hey, okay, worst case, it's a tie game. Let's go down there. Let's close and go win this game. But instead, you just kind of stand there, let everything play out. What ends up happening? Jamal Murray hits a big shot and wins the game. It's just, it's frustrating because it's like, Every game, the Lakers are in the game. And every game, Darvin Ham just gets clearly and brutally outcoached. I mean, that's really what it's boiling down to at this point. right? I mean, the Lakers have been in every game. Lakers have had every opportunity to win every game. And every game, they blow it. Now, again, it's not solely on Darvin Ham, but he does the Lakers zero favors. And he has moments where he looks great. I thought he had several sequences this game where he actually looked like a competent head coach. And then he just has that one sequence or two where it's just like, dude, come on. You, you, you're putting us further behind the eight ball. It's like, I need you to at least be competent. What's the worst case that happens? You burn a timeout. You still have one in your pocket with a two-point lead. They tie it. You go down, you score, right? You're not using that timeout unless Denver takes the lead. So why does it matter? But 
once again, what happens? We don't do that. It ultimately ends up a tie game. LeBron misses a shot. I mean, we scored again after that. Then it was 99-99. LeBron misses the shot. And Jamal Murray does what Jamal Murray's done to us every fourth quarter since we've played them <laughs> the last, like, two years. Just beats us. Handles business, shows up. He couldn't buy a bucket and was atrocious all game long. But guess what happened when it mattered? It doesn't matter how many shots you miss. It matters the one that you make. And the one that he made was the one that beat us. You know, he could have went, what was he, like 9 of 24? He could have went 1 of 24. And if that one was the one that beat us, that one is the one that beat us. And it's just, it's these little things in a series where everything is just so marginal. Everything is just, you know, one possession, one play, one call, one. These are the things that, can be the difference in you winning or losing a game, right? Or maybe you maybe you get lucky, and what if you ice Jamal Murray because he's sitting there thinking about it for 10 minutes while they're reviewing, and now he's got to step to the line, take the shots. Maybe he misses one, and if he misses one, you know, you go down, you score, right? Because they went and pushed it to 99, the Lakers did. So all of a sudden, it's a three-point game. So if they go and they score, right, Okay, well, now you're up one. They have to play the foul game. So now you don't get the game winner. You make both your free throws. They're shooting for three. Maybe they don't hit that three, right? It's just, it changes the course of everything. There's so many different possible outcomes that could have potentially taken place on that one free throw or that one uh, non-call by Darvin Ham, that non-challenge, right? And it's just like, again, what? What's the worst that happens? Worst that happens is the exact same result, which is an L. Best case scenario is the, the tables turn and all of a sudden it's a 1-1 series. You're heading back to L.A. Jared Vanderbilt's getting ready to return, and so is Christian Wood. Your confidence is high. The momentum's high. You feel like you can really beat Denver. It's just everything changes. And again, I'm not saying that we solely lost that game on that Darvin Ham call, but it didn't help at all. I mean, it did everything. It, it it was as bad as it could get, and it just it's more evidence, more signs that like that he's just unfortunately he's in over his head. I wish we had a coach that was I was confident in, and you know I felt like man we we really have an advantage here, but that's just it's not the case. It's just not, and it's unfortunate, and it sucks, and it's like, you know, you really hope that the Lakers can kind of pull out these two home games and make it a series, and now it's 2-2 heading back to Denver. Now, again, I'm always going to remain hopeful. I'm always going to remain optimistic. This one hurt. This one was tough. It's frustrating, but look, it, it's not too late. What Lakers team are we going to get in game three? Are we going to get the team that's just like, we just we can't win we can't every time we get there we fall short or is this going to be the Lakers team that's like hey look at what we just did we had them we had them on the ropes it took a literal miracle for them to pull it off but we had them on the ropes we were able to pull it out and now look all right let's go let's go win these two games you know and then you win those two games and it's like man we we could we should have swept them we're up 15 in game one 20 in game two Took a miracle shot in game two. We win game three and game four. It's like, it's a completely different series. Now the momentum's entirely high. It's just, uh, it's like every time we need the ball to just just drop in our favor, just go our way, just tilt a little bit to the left. It just goes all the way right. (laughs) It's like, man, we really need LeBron to knock down that three. Ah, Of course he misses it. You know, Jamal Murray, ah, man, we really need him to miss that shot. Crazy fadeaway over Anthony Davis. What happened? Hits the shot. Guy couldn't buy a bucket all game, except for when it counted. And it's just, it's those little things. Just like every time, it's just like, it's just this dark cloud over the Lakers when it comes to Denver. It's just that that team that just, it's just nothing goes right when we need it to. But I still think like, 
You just, you go get that one win. You go get that one win. You build that confidence. You take it one game at a time, one pace at a time. All of a sudden, one win turns into two. All of a sudden, the series is tied. You're feeling confident again. You're back in business. D'Lo showed up. D'Lo looked great. It can really change things, but we'll see. See how it goes. Anyway, as always, this is a discussion. Pat's question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? What are your thoughts on Darvin Ham and the uh, non-challenge? Uh, uh, do you think that that was the thing? What, however you feel, whatever your thoughts are, I'd love to hear. Let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. So we enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. Not subscribe channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.